Wireless charging is one of those technologies that I really want to see succeed, but really smartphone users haven't become fully enamored with it yet. And maybe one of the reasons is that there are different competing standards. So what are those competing standards and what is the future of wireless charging? Well, let me explain. First of all, I really must recommend that you go to watch one of my videos about wireless charging. There I give a demonstration using a nail and some wires and a battery and a voltmeter about the basic principles of how wireless charging work. That will be linked here in the description below, but please do go and watch that because that will give you a background to what I'm going to tell you now. Now, wireless charging is one of those features you find in some of the top-end flagship smartphones, but the manufacturers, the OEMs, don't really make a huge fuss about it. It is in the uh, top-end uh, Galaxy uh, smartphones, like some version of the LG G6 have wireless charging in it, but really, there's not a big fuss made about it. Now, one of the reasons for that is that there are three different competing organizations that are trying to push forward their wireless charging technology. Now, in the background, one of the biggest things that's probably happened is this year, Apple joined the Wireless Power Consortium with their Qi chargers. Now, the Qi chargers is what you find in the uh, Galaxy phones from Samsung, for example. Now, the fact that Apple joined this, this organization means there's now lots of rumors that the iPhone 8 will support it, and lots of Apple fans are saying, well, once the iPhone supports it, everybody will support it. Now, that might not actually be the case, the future will show, but let me tell you about the different types of charging technology that exist today, and it's all about distance. How far do you have to be away from the charging station? Now, the one that is the most popular today is Qi, and Qi has two different types of system. One is the one where you touch the phone directly on the back of the pad. It has to be within a quarter of an inch, within seven millimeters, otherwise the charging doesn't work, and that's called induction charging. And that's what we see today on phones like the uh, Galaxy uh, S7. Now the Qi standard also includes something called resonant charging, which allows the distance to be slightly larger, 45 millimeters, which is about 1.7 inches. And that's good when you want to have the chargers built into a desk for the office or maybe some furniture. So you put your phone down on the arm of your chair and it starts charging even though it's not exposed at the surface. Now the third type of wireless charging is what I'm calling uncoupled. And that's a system where the device that's being charged and the charging station don't need to be next to each other. In fact, there's a new type of technology which the devices can be up to 15 feet away. Now the leader in this field at the moment is a technology called What Up. Not What's App, but What Up. And the idea is that when you walk into a room that has one of these charging base stations, your devices can start to be charged remotely. And it does that by sending out radio signals in the five gigahertz band that then are, cause the charging to happen in the devices. And in fact, these base stations can be programmed so that when it sees maybe your smartphone, it gives that priority in charging than it does maybe over your Fitbit. And the reason for that is there isn't that much power that can be transmitted through this new system. We're talking maybe only 700 milliamp hours. So that's not very high. Now, Apple are also rumored to be working with the What Up technology, and that again has given a whole bunch of rumors about wireless charging in future versions of the iPhone. Now, just to quickly mention the three different uh, camps that are available at the moment. One is the Wireless Power Consortium with the uh, Qi charging, and that's got Qualcomm in it, and Samsung, LG, HTC, MediaTek, and now, of course, Apple. The other is the Fuel Cell Alliance, and that was made by a merger between the Alliance for Wireless Power and the Power Matters Alliance, PMA. Now, PMA charging is what you actually find inside also of some of the leading flagship Samsung phones. So Samsung kind of went with both ways. And of course, Samsung are one of the partners of the Air, Air Fuel Alliance, as are LG, Sony, HT, Qualcomm, Intel, MediaTek, and now also Huawei. So as you can see, some companies are hedging their bets and, put, and being part of both different specifications. And the third one is this one called What Up, which I just talked about at the moment. They don't have any products actually out. They say they'll have a product out at the end of 2017, and Apple are rumored to be working with them. Now, while technology is great, while innovation is brilliant, one thing we all hate is competing standards, which means that you invest in one ecosystem, you invest in one way of doing things, and then find out that the other one did, became the boss, and we really hate that. So for consumers' sakes, I really just do shout out to all of these different 
to power charging organizations, get your act together and work together because I don't wanna buy a phone and then find out that actually I chose the wrong one. And there are so many examples of this in consumer history, VHS and Betamax, HD DVD and Blu-ray, and there's just so many other examples. Really, we want one option that works well and we're prepared to pay for it if it does the job properly. Now there's one area that I haven't mentioned that could really be a deciding factor when it comes to wireless charging. And that is that when there's this charging happening, the phone and the base station could also communicate. Now at the moment, there is some basic communication that happens at the two kilobits per second. Uh, range, which is very, very small, when a phone is placed on a charging pad because they discuss between the charge and the phone what level of power wants to be uh, used, what the battery level is, and so they can talk to each other. But wouldn't it be great if you could put your phone down on to uh, a charging pad on a desk, and let's say you put it down on a table inside a coffee shop, and actually up comes the menu, and you can order from there, and that automatically gets sent over to the uh, bar where they're making the coffees for you. Or what about if in the future you have an electro electric car, it drives into your garage, it starts to use wireless charging to charge it up, and at the same time it starts to talk to the uh, wireless charger, maybe receiving software updates, maybe it's um, kind of downloading its fuel statistics and its kind of diagnostics. All these things would be great. Now at the moment, that doesn't exist in a kind of a generalized form. There is that idea to have that kind of discussion about power levels, but wouldn't it be good if technologies were changed so that actually you could have communications while you were charging? Now really the best solutions at the moment are kind of using NFC together with Qi charging, or maybe to have kind of some Bluetooth enabled. But if you've got all of that that stuff going on between the two devices, wouldn't it be great if it was just built in? So you had wireless charging and near field communications of a sort at the same time. Maybe that will be the thing that will make wireless charging take off and be the uh, kind of technology that we all want in our smartphones. Well, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Please use the comments below to tell me, do you use wireless charging? I know some of you really love it. Some of you just don't care. Some of you, it's a real must when you buy a phone. Some of you, if it's got it, I don't mind. Tell me what you think about wireless charging. Tell me what you think would be the best thing about wireless charging that would make you change your mind so that you would start to use it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. Hit that little bell icon so that you get notifications when we release a new video. And last but not least, go over to androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.